This podcast aims to help both men and women comprehend the intricacies of a woman's sexual pleasure center, fostering a deeper appreciation and respect for the complexities of female sexuality and pleasure. In the early 1980s, researchers in the United States embarked on a quest to unravel the enigma of female ejaculation and the G-spot, two intriguing aspects of female sexuality that had long been shrouded in mystery. These groundbreaking studies brought these topics into the limelight, raising public awareness and sparking a revolution in understanding women's sexual pleasure. The first study, led by Josephine Londis Sevilly, conducted a comprehensive investigation into the historical context of female ejaculation. This Harvard-funded research revealed that knowledge and discussions about female ejaculation dated back as far as the 17th century. The study shed light on the female prostate as the source of female ejaculation, an anatomical feature that had been examined and documented in scientific literature. In a separate study, the Federation of Feminist Women's Health Centers focused on the clitoris, the tiny organ that plays a crucial role in female sexual pleasure. Their findings astounded the scientific community, as they unveiled that a significant part of the clitoris is hidden inside the female body, a revelation that had far-reaching implications for understanding female pleasure. The third study, conducted by researchers Beverly Whipple and John Perry, honed in on a sensitive area in the vagina that seemed to be linked to female ejaculation. They christened this area the G-spot, in honor of Ernst Grafenberg, a pioneering researcher who explored this particular zone in women's anatomy. Their analysis also uncovered that this area can produce its own unique type of orgasm, distinct from clitoral orgasms. Further exploration of female ejaculation took place in Europe, where Dr. Carl Stifter and his team conducted a German academic study that delved into the cultural history of female ejaculation. Their research not only confirmed that female ejaculation was known and respected in various parts of the world but also meticulously documented the chemical analysis of female ejaculate. Meanwhile, Dr. Francisco Cabello Santamaria's studies in Spain hinted at the possibility that all women may be capable of ejaculating, although some might do so in a retrograde manner, where the ejaculate is directed into the bladder if not released externally. However, it was the study by Dr. Milan Zaviacic at Komenius University in Slovakia that put to rest the long-standing debate over the existence of the G-spot and female ejaculation. This groundbreaking research definitively determined that the G-spot is, indeed, the female prostate. Dr. Zaviacic's team meticulously examined the structure of the female prostate and meticulously analyzed the ejaculate fluid at the cellular level. Their findings not only solidified the existence of the G-spot but also shed light on its potential role in hormone production and its possible influence on fertility. These extraordinary discoveries revolutionized the understanding of women's sexual anatomy and function. Prior to these findings, there was widespread ignorance and misunderstanding about this central part of women's sexual pleasure. Embracing and acknowledging the full structure and capabilities of a woman's sexual pleasure center has the potential to lead to increased self-esteem and empowerment for women, challenging outdated societal views and promoting a more comprehensive and positive understanding of female sexuality. Women emit ejaculate fluid through the urethral canal when aroused and or during orgasm. Those who have experienced it often describe it as gushing from the body. Until recently, very little public information existed about the phenomenon. Therefore, the small minority of women who did ejaculate were quiet about it or mistook it for urination. Women can ejaculate many times during a lovemaking session. Quite frequently, the amounts of ejaculate emitted increase during the session if the G-spot continues to be stimulated. Quantity can also increase over time as a woman develops a stronger sense of her G-spot and becomes comfortable letting the ejaculate flow freely. The quantity of ejaculate varies from woman to woman, and there are many factors influencing it. These include where a woman is in her menstrual cycle, the amount of stimulation her prostate G-spot is receiving, her feelings about her sexual encounter, her experience and comfort level with ejaculating, the strength of her pelvic floor muscles, the method of arousal and type of orgasm, and whether there is something in her vagina, like a penis or vibrator. The question is often asked, why do some women ejaculate and others not? Almost all women have ejaculated, but not all are aware of it. They may mistake the fluid for urine or vaginal lubrication, 
and some may even believe they have urinary stress incontinence. Some women simply don't feel the sensation of ejaculation. In addition, some women control their ejaculate by unconsciously preventing its release to the outside of the body, which pushes the ejaculate, retrograde, into the bladder, instead. Other women may not ejaculate because of physical or emotional reasons, despite being born with the anatomy to do so. Some women don't ejaculate because of surgery that has damaged the G-spot, prostate. Others because their pelvic floor muscles may be too weak to eject the ejaculate. In addition, some women may be having clitoral orgasms that do not stimulate the pelvic nerve, which in turn does not stimulate the pelvic floor muscles to contract and expel the ejaculate. A reason why many women produce only small amounts of ejaculate may be that the female prostate is conditioned to produce less ejaculate when women unconsciously control its release by clamping down on the sensation of needing to pee. This almost instinctual, learned behavior causes overly tense pelvic floor muscles in some women and weak ones in others. In some cases, women avoid sexual arousal altogether because they do not want to feel that urge to urinate during lovemaking. The sensation of needing to pee is usually the urge to ejaculate. A fascinating study, conducted in 1997 in Spain by psychologist and sexologist Dr. Francisco Cabello Santamaria, suggests that many women, when sexually aroused, ejaculate retrograde into the bladder. Dr. Cabello tested the contents of the bladder in 24 women for prostate-specific antigen, PSA, the female ejaculate identifier, before and after orgasm. PSA is also tested in men to identify prostate health. Although only 3 out of the 24 women who were tested had ejaculated, 75% of the non-ejaculating women produced urine samples that had a higher percentage of PSA than had been present in their pre-orgasm urine samples. These results led Dr. Cabello to assert that some women experience retrograde ejaculation. Because the ejaculate fluid is being released into the bladder rather than being expelled to the outside of the body, some researchers have speculated that retrograde ejaculation may be a cause of bladder infections in women, as it is in men. Are you surprised to hear that ejaculation can be controlled and diverted in this way? Most public information supports the erroneous belief that ejaculation is not controllable and that only men ejaculate. But the reality is that both men and women can control whether or not they ejaculate and both men and women can ejaculate with or without an orgasm. This ability to choose whether or not to ejaculate has been mastered by many males today and throughout history. Indeed, it is a cultural norm in some societies, particularly in the East. Women will discover that it is possible to ejaculate without having an orgasm, sometimes many times during one lovemaking session. Making the choice to ejaculate or not is important for a woman's sense of personal empowerment. Choosing to ejaculate gives a woman freedom to use the anatomical ability she was born with in order to increase her sexual pleasure and health, and, as we shall see in the following chapters, the pleasure and health of her partner. Choosing not to ejaculate allows women to consciously and thoughtfully delay the experience or decline it altogether. When women begin to investigate ejaculation for themselves, they may realize that they have ejaculated in the past but haven't noticed it. This is because ejaculation usually occurs just as a woman begins to orgasm, which can override the sensation of ejaculating. In general, ejaculation does not make a woman's orgasm feel fuller and more satisfying. Rather, it often provides a feeling of relief to the pelvic area. Ejaculation is not orgasm.